The city of Jerusalem has 12 gates. I think that was intentional. 12 was a holy number. There are 12 tribes of Israel. There were 12 disciples of Jesus. And the architecture of the land, as often architecture does, resembles their beliefs. So when they built a wall around that great city to protect it from enemies, they built 12 openings. On the northern side of the city, there is an opening, a gate, called the Sheep's Gate. It's pretty easy to assume what that was for, right? The sheep would come in, probably from the pastures of the Galilee and around. They would come in through the gate, which was near the Temple Mount. And the sheep there, poor guys, would get ready to be slaughtered for sacrifices at the temple. Scholars are not sure, but they think that the road from Jericho, which is sort of northeast, might have ended at the Sheep's Gate. Beside the gate, there was a pool of water. Now, even today, we know that Israel is a very hot and very dry land. We Floridians know hot, but when we sweat, we sweat with moisture, right? We get all sweaty and stinky, and we know we're sweating. In Israel, it is so dry that when you sweat, you don't always know you're sweating. You lose your your water, it evaporates from your body, which is very dangerous In other words, you can die of dehydration within a period of hours if you're not careful. So as you can imagine, and because the rain was far less than we have here in Florida, water was the stuff of life. And really, science would tell us water is the stuff of life, right? I mean, we can't live without it. Our bodies are made up primarily of water. This planet is made up primarily of water. When we search for life on other planets, we're usually looking for something like water because it supports organic life. So water had become, over the millennia, a symbol of life itself. No wonder to be baptized, to be put in water, was a sign of new birth. Around this pool, there were gathered a lot of people who were very sick. Now remember that in Jesus' time, they didn't have medical science the way that we have. So they couldn't categorize people. They'd just say some were sick, some were lame, and some were paralyzed. But they didn't know one had spina bifida. They didn't know that one had suffered some kind of illness that led to paralysis. They didn't know that one was so weak that he couldn't walk but could have gotten better and walked. They didn't know any of the different categories of medical terminology that we know today. They just knew that people were unable to walk, unable to live normally, and so these invalids gathered around the pool where they would hope to go into the water to get some relief. Even today, Physical therapists will often put you in the water because it's healing, because it's easier to move. What's so interesting about this passage is that, as you know, the Bible exists in lots of different scrolls and papyri, ancient texts that are in museums all over the world, right? And when we put the Bible together, we we look at all these different texts 
Well, there are a few texts of this particular gospel that contain a couple extra verses. But because they're not in the majority, we we don't usually read them in our translation. But these texts say that the invalids believed that when the water was stirred up by wind or breeze, that meant that an angel was coming down. And they would try to get in the water to get healed by the angel. Jesus is walking by and he sees all these people and he notices one man. This one man has been ill for 38 years. Now, in Jesus' lifetime, the average age of a man was 40, so he'd probably been ill his whole life. Jesus knows that this man knows nothing more than his illness. And he asks this man a question that I believe he asks you and he asks me. It is one of the most profound questions that Jesus asks any of us. He asks this man, do you want to be well? Do you want to be well? And this man cannot conceive of what Jesus is asking him. His sight has become so narrow. All of his life, his focus has been on whether he could get in the water or not, whether he could get a drink or not, whether he could get some food or not. And when Jesus asks him if he wants to be well, he answers by saying, Sir, sometimes I try to get in the water and someone steps over me and then I can't get in. Or sometimes nobody comes and picks me up and brings me in the water. Jesus is asking him if he wants to be well and he's saying, I want to get a foot over here. He cannot comprehend the question. He doesn't understand what wellness looks like, what joy looks like. And the word well in the, in the ancient Greek, it, it means whole. It's very similar to the word shalom. It means peace, whole, joyfulness, completeness. It's a big word. Do you want to be whole? And the man says, basically, I need a Band-Aid. There was a woman in Kansas in my former parish who I just loved, and she lived so long, almost to 100. Occasionally, when I became the dean here, she would just call me just to tell me about her life, and it was so sweet. But I noticed that over the years, her vision got more and more narrow. I would say, Nan, how are you? Well, my knee is hurting, and I've been, at, I've been going to the doctor, but it's just not straightening up the right way. And I know it's going to straighten up the right way. And I'd say, okay, well, what else is going on? Well, my hip. Well, what about the city you live in or the world itself? But it was as if her vision got narrower and narrower and narrower until she became consumed with her own illness. And her idea of health became straightening her knee a little bit more. And she forgot the joy of living. Have you ever thought that when Jesus asks you to be well, that he may be asking you something that you don't even know what it looks like? Jesus says to the man, pick up your mat, get up, and walk. 
I want us to think for a moment what that might have been like for this man. I bet he probably didn't even understand at first what Jesus was saying. I bet he was like, say what? Yeah. I bet he did not know how to do what Jesus was asking him. He was basically being born into a whole new reality. It makes me think of when a baby is born. You know, when a baby is born, they say the baby just sees all this blur. They don't know how to distinguish between people and furniture, and it's all just, whoa. I bet it was overwhelming, and then maybe it was hard. Maybe it was a little painful. Maybe it, I, was he sore? He hadn't used his muscles much before. What if getting to be well the way God intends means that it's going to be confusing or hard or painful a little bit as God opens up your tunnel vision, as God shows you what it means to be whole? Maybe you've got to be born into a whole new perspective. And that can be exhausting. I like my nice little world the way I made it. Things are simple. Do I really want to be well? Do I really want to know what the resurrection of life means? What joy really means? And do I want to be told by Jesus to get up and move? Uh, then what? What might Jesus ask of me then? Sometimes I think that we're more afraid of our own power than we are of our misery. Sometimes I think that we don't even know how to say yes to God's invitation. Do you want to be well, Jesus asks us. What will be your answer? Who are you? Who am I? And what can we do together? I believe that the answer is just beginning to be born among us. Amen.